Hi everyone. So this is uh, part of the video on uh, installing the third function hydraulic kit on my Case D40 tractor. Um, I had no luck with hoses. Hoses are uh, they're just too heavy to bend around where I need them to go. Uh, and there's very limited space to work underneath the tractor. There's a uh, where the uh, hydraulic block is and where the the uh, f the frame is there's only a, about six or eight inches and it's just not enough space under there to uh, to fit a hose or four hoses in in my case um, it's just not going to work with hoses so not to be defeated I decided to do hard pipe or hard line as it's called. So in other words it is steel hydraulic lines with JIC fittings. A lot more difficult to work with but I can get it into smaller spaces and I think it'll work out better. Anyway so one of the things I needed for that project was a pipe bender and I was approached by a company called Vivor and they have all different kinds of tools and equipment and what just about everything if, if uh, you look at their website it's bottomless <laughs> they've got so many things on there it's it's mind-boggling anyway uh, I told them well they had been asking me what kind of tools I needed and I couldn't think of anything at the time and then when I got into this project I said you know I need a pipe bender so I looked up pipe benders on Amazon and I came across a pipe bender and it had the name Vivor on the side of it. So I'm like, wait a second, that's the same company. So I approached Vivor and I said, hey, this is the this is what I need. And uh, what can you do for me? Next thing you know, a pipe bender shows up at my door. Uh, so this is unboxing that pipe bender, and uh, I just this is my first initial look at it, and I want to see uh, what it's all about, what the quality is, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. I've already, I confess, I've already cut the lid off because I didn't know what I didn't know what it was when it showed up. Manual pipe bender user's manual. Okay. That's the user's manual you get. Now, if you're going to be bending steel pipe, you, you have to know what you're doing. This is just generally the components of this and how to how to work with it. Uh, it's not going to go into any real detail on how to bend pipe. So I'm going to start pulling stuff out. Okay, here's a die. So this is marked, it's got the number 16, and it's marked 5 eighths. It's uh, quite heavy, it looks like it's got a good finish on it. Alright, that's one. Uh, here's a handle. There's the handle. That's pretty, uh, pretty beefy. That's uh, eighth inch wall, eighth inch wall tubing they made the handle out of. All right. <clears throat> Here's another die. This one is marked. It's marked fourteen and nine sixteenths. <clears throat> this was marked 19 and three quarter. I'm 
saving all the packaging. I don't know if they're going to want this back or not. That's a number 12, and it's marked half inch. This is really uh, quite a complete set here, I think. Okay, here's another one. That's marked 3 8 Yeah, there's a big one. That's probably... Oh my gosh, okay. That's, that's a number 22, and that's marked 7 8 Not sure I want to bend that kind of pipe. see what this stuff is. Okay, here is the mounting base. Looks really well made. <clears throat> <All right. clears throat> One more die. One inch. There's a one inch die. Wow. So you can bend up to one inch pipe with this thing. All right, now we have all these things. It's a, a tiny wheel. It's another, the other side of the die. Okay, that's marked 16. Let me see, can we zoom in at all? Ten, nineteen, fourteen, twelve. So these numbers clearly correspond to the numbers that are on the dies. All right. And I think this is the main fender. Now I have to get the box out of the way. The box, even the box is well put together. It's a very thick, heavy cardboard to keep the thing from exploding in shipment. Okay, slide that out of here. So there's the main, the main part of the bender. The handle, the handle has a little bit of surface rust on it. That's not a big deal to me because I can fix that. I guess this is how you change the dies. Ah, yes. So the bolt comes out. Got it. So the die the bolt goes through here and through the through the roller and just a, a nylock on top. Okay. So that's really quite nice. Now what I'm going to have to do here, yeah, look at that, all right, that's how you adjust. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have to find, well, all right, before I do anything else, I need to mount this because I'm going to be bending some very heavy pipe. So this mounting plate is going to have to get bolted to something. So I think I think what I should do is make a plate that I can put in my vise. And that'll make it somewhat portable, movable. I can do my bending and then get it out of the way. 
I think. Um, the downside is now I'm depending on the strength of the vise to bend the pipe. So since I'm only going to be bending half inch and five eighths pipe, I'm not too worried about that. I think if I was going to be bending three quarter inch pipe, I would probably bolt this to one of my steel tables so that it can't possibly move. <clears throat> Alright, but overall, overall this looks really, really nice. I'm, I'm really impressed with the quality of this and uh, it should be quite interesting. Uh oh. Oh, wait a second. Am I doing that wrong? So that has to go there. And then this goes on top here. Well, that's odd. Alright. So I'm doing it wrong. Does that go here? It's supposed to go here. It's not fitting on there. That's interesting. You would think that the handle would fit over this this pin here. But it's not. So unless I'm mistaken on how this is supposed to function. Well, let's look at something here. What do we got there? Nine sixteenths, five eighths. Where's my where's my half inch? Three eighths. Here's my half inch die. All right, so half inch die should go there, and that's a number twelve. So that should be this one. So let's put this in place. On. Okay. So this should go like this. So what do we have going on here? Well, okay, so I'm thinking uh, they made an error with this. I'm looking to see if there's a burr or something on here, and I don't see one. It just looks like this pin is too large. So the pin measures 25.49 millimeters. The hole, which we're going to measure this way, twenty-four point five. And this was 25.3, so it's a little bit off. Okay, well that's uh, that's unfortunate because otherwise this looks really nice. All right, well I'm going to go contact uh, Vivor and see what they have to say about it. Well, here we are. Uh, I decided to just go ahead and repair this uh, pipe bender if. If I have to pay for it after I do this, well, so be it. Um, I would like to keep it anyway because it seems to be a pretty nice unit. So anyway, what I've done is I've set up the base in the lathe. I think this was easier than setting up the arm in the milling machine. And uh, I had to set it up on a faceplate. And we're within... Three 
thousandths of an inch. So that's that's good enough for this. I can probably keep fooling with it, but it's tough because it's on a faceplate and I can only do two bolts. So I didn't have a whole lot to work with there. I'm going to uh, just run with this and uh, I'm going to take a couple light cuts. I don't have to remove much, but this should do the trick. So I do not know what type of material this is. So I'm going to use a carbide tool. Just assuming that it's relatively hard, although it does kind of look like it's cast. Don't know. This is how this is how I center my tools. Many ways to do this. I figure putting a uh, putting a dead center in and then lining up the edge of the tool with the dead center gets me pretty darn close. Okay. Now, since I'm doing this on a faceplate, I don't want to spin this thing too fast. So let's, we're going to go in back here. as much as I need to and not too much. And you are what nine nine eight. So twelve thousandths ought to do it. Got a little oil.
making a look made a little line when I ran it back. That's how I can tell it needs another spring. This is sticking out so far it's flexing even under that light pressure. Stop there. See what we have. Point nine nine zero. <clears throat> so that's still too big. So we have to be at this one is nine eight six, so we have to take a little more off. So here nine nine zero. Need another four thousandths, but we're also going to need a little bit of clearance. So we're going to do let's take four, three, four take another four thou. Zero. Nine eight five. The arm is point nine eight six. So pretty sure it's going to need a little more. Well, maybe not. Nope. We're going to leave that right there. That's perfect. Now we can try putting it together again. Before I remove this from the lathe, I decided I better put a die on here and then slide the arm on and make sure that everything is good because it took me it took me some time to uh, mount this and get it just right and centered and I if I have to do anything else to it now would be the time. But it looks like the die lines up even if this is sitting all the way down on it, 
there is enough slop in this thing. It's right, so. Just one. Just trying to make doubly sure. Put this on. And yeah, I guess, I mean, you could probably use a shim under there, but. I don't know. There's enough. There's an, enough slop in this. Now, what I just turned, there's a couple thousandths all the way out, all the way out here at the end for a uh, slop. That's not very much. So I think that's, I think that's pretty good as far as turning that. Definitely want to keep it nice and tight. So yeah, I think that's got it. Not bad for by eye. <laughs> that is perfectly square. <clears throat> now I put a weld here and a weld here, and that, that's to help it stay straight when I put the rest of the weld on.
want to switch to some 7018s just to finish this off and make it look good. The 6010 rod is really messy. It's great for burning through rust and paint, but it is really an ugly rod. Clamping this so that when I do the transfer punch, it uh, doesn't move around, even though So this is probably not necessary to align each hole. We'll get it. Get them as close as possible.
close enough. So I've run into a uh, little issue here. Now working with the smaller diameter tubing, there's one minor issue, and it's not really an issue, it's just something that you have to be aware of. The bolt holding the mounting plate here is interfering with the nut and stud that holds the uh, outer die in place. So we can't go past there. So if you're working with smaller diameter tubing, you need to take this bolt out. And it has three other bolts, so it shouldn't be a big deal. That will get you beyond a 180 degree bend. So that should be perfectly fine. This is the completed setup of the model SWG25 pipe bending tool. So I just grabbed a piece of uh, copper tubing to mess with. Uh, I had to turn my vise since I'm going this direction with it. And I don't even think I need the handle for copper. So we insert this into the die. Okay, so now I've got the tubing with just a little bit sticking out of the plate where it's held onto, and I'm just going to do a little, a little 45 degree bend. Now there are no markings on this, so you're really, you're really going by eye, and that's that's it. that out of there and there's a little bend. Looks like it did okay. Didn't didn't do d damage to the pipe or anything. Um, I tried it a few minutes ago and I had the roller right up against just to see what it would do and uh, yeah it, it didn't uh, didn't do so good mashed the edge of the pipe here so that's that's me that's me not knowing 
how to operate it properly, I'm sure. Um, I am not a uh, pipe bending expert by any means, so this is all a learning experience for me. Um, so overall, it's very well built, uh, with the exception of the the center pin, which I don't know. I'm just going to pass that off as uh, a manufacturing defect. So manufacturing missed it and quality control missed it anyway uh, it seems to work I will move on to some steel tubing when I go to do the hydraulics on the tractor and then we'll probably do a, a another test bend and it looks like by doing a 45 that's going to be the key to getting those hydraulics hooked up because I don't believe I'm going to be able to do a 90 in any way, shape, or form and get it to fit underneath the tractor. So I'll probably have to make the tubes, or you know, one end to be a 45. Anyway, uh, so this is uh, the Vivor SWG25 pipe bender. I'm pleased with it. And... There will be a link down below where you can purchase it. I wanted to go over the manual that came with the pipe bender. Um, the manual is... Well, how about this? How about I read the first paragraph under, under content? And then you'll get the idea. The model manual pipe bender, SWG25, apply to the steel tube with drafty, seamless, and neither hot press nor cold press in the cold condition. It also be used to metal pipe, stainless steel pipe, wire pipe, circle steel pipe, and low pressure liquid joining pipe. Okay, I don't know what that means, but the rest of the manual is not any better. Here's the diagram. The instructions, well, I don't know if that's the instructions or, okay. It lists the components the base, the core axis, which is the pin there, the adjusted nut, <laughs> number 12 is hands, I think they mean handle, um, number 13, the cannulae for operation, don't know what that means. Anyway, I'm not going to read anymore. You get the idea. Uh, the manual is not going to be very helpful other than giving you a picture um, and a, some specifications. So the outer diameter that this can handle is 25 millimeters or approximately one inch. The, th the wall thickness of the pipe. Now that's going to be a very critical uh, piece of information that if you're going to use this you need to know is less than two millimeters or 78 thousandths of an inch. It says bender angle less than 180 degrees but I don't know it looks like it'll go farther than that. Um, bender radii says 4D I don't know exactly what that means. The weight of this piece of equipment is 25 kilograms, so it's fairly fairly beefy. All right, anyway, that's enough for the manual. This is everything that comes in the box with the SWG25 pipe bender. You get The, the bending arm, you get a handle, 
you get uh, the number 12 dies are already mounted here because I was using it. Uh, you don't get this plate on the bottom. That plate is uh, what I made to, to mount it in my vise. And then you get all you get all these other dies and all the rollers to go with them. And that's pretty much it. And it's in a nice heavy box. And you get the operating manual. Can't forget that. So that's it. Hopefully this was useful to you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. If there's anything else I can uh, show you or demonstrate, please just ask. Thank you for watching.